In this lecture we're going to look at section 3.4 which deals with nuclear chemistry. I'll start with considering what is meant by the term radioisotope. Now you should be familiar with the term isotope from unit 1. So isotopes are atoms with the same number of protons but different number of neutrons or a different way of saying that atoms with the same atomic number but a different mass number. So for example here's two isotopes of chlorine. They both have the same atomic number, same number of new protons, but they have a different mass number because this one has got 18 neutrons and this one's got 20 neutrons. Now these are both stable isotopes but sometimes some isotopes might be unstable. That means the nucleus is not very stable. And isotopes which have, have unstable nuclei are called radioactive isotopes or sometimes just radioisotopes. They're unstable, they break down and when they break down they emit one of three types of radiation alpha, beta or gamma radiation. So we're now going to look at the nature of alpha, beta and gamma radiation. Right, one interesting experiment is to fire alpha and beta and gamma rays through an electric field. Now, gamma rays go straight through the electric field without being deflected, which tells us gamma rays have got no charge. Beta particles, on the other hand, this line here, are deflected, pulled towards the positive plate, which means beta particles have got a negative charge and the alpha particles are bent towards the negative plate which means they've got a positive charge. So beta particles are in fact negatively charged electrons which are emitted by the nucleus and we can write that like that or we can use the beta sign. Okay. Either of them are acceptable ways of writing a beta particle. The alpha particle is a helium nucleus, which we can write like that, with or without the charge. Okay. Or we can use the alpha particle sign. Okay. So both those are acceptable ways of writing the alpha particle. Worth pointing out that the alpha particle is very big compared with a, elect with a beta particle so that's why it's not deflected as much as the beta particle because it's a big huge particle in, in subatomic terms. And the gamma ray is just electromagnetic radiation and it's just given the symbol gamma. Okay. So there are the three types of radiation that can be emitted by an unstable nucleus, a radioisotope alphas, betas or gammas. Now with our knowledge of what an alpha, beta and gamma ray are we should be able to write balanced nuclear equations showing what's produced when uh, a radioisotope undergoes decay. So we look at alpha decay first of all. We've got uranium-238 and it emits an alpha particle and the product is this thorium-234. So notice that the mass number on the right hand side, 234 plus 4, equals the mass number on the left hand side. And the atomic number on the right hand side, 90 plus 2, equals the atomic number on the left hand side. So if you are given an equation like this and asked to determine the identity of the product. We know that the mass number plus 4 must come to 228, so the mass number has got to be 224. The atomic number got to be 86 plus 2 to equal 88. And we look up the periodic table and find that 86 is radon Rn. So we can predict the product of the alpha decay. If we look at beta decay, 
Well, here's the beta particle. And again, just the mass numbers have to add up and uh, atomic numbers have to add up. So if we're given um, one with the unknown product, so the mass number of the unknown product has got to be 137. So 137 plus 0 equals 137. The atomic number, you have to take away 1 to get 55. So it's got to be 56. Take away 1 is 55. Look up the periodic table, 56 is barium. Okay. Now I won't do an equivalent thing for gamma decay because gamma decay doesn't actually change the atomic number or the mass number. It's just a de-excitation process which usually accompanies alpha or beta decay. So you don't need to, in terms of Barr's nuclear equations, you don't need to worry about gammas. Another way of asking the question is to give us the starting radioisotope, the product, and ask you to predict what type of radiation has been emitted. Again, you just do the maths. So <coughs> the mass number here must be 0, 99 plus 0 equals 99, and 43 plus something gives you 42, so it must be minus 1. So it's going to be a beta particle. You can write it with the E here or the beta. I'll do the beta. Okay, either would be acceptable. And this bottom one, 206 plus 4 is going to give me 210, and 82 plus 2 will give me 84. So in this case it's going to be an alpha particle. We can write it as HE or we can just write it as the alpha. Okay, uh, another pro important property of radiation is a penetrating power. And I'm sure you've seen a picture like this before, showing the very different penetrating powers of alpha, beta and gamma rays. Alphas have got a very low penetration power. They are stopped by about 10 centimetres of air, or by just a thin piece of paper. The alpha particle cannot go through it. Beta particles can go through paper, but a thin sheet of metal, aluminium for example, would stop a beta particle. Whereas the gamma rays are very penetrating. They go through paper, go through thin sheets of metal. I need a very thick block of lead, which is a very dense metal, or concrete to stop all the gamma rays. Now the different penetrating powers of the different types of radiation are important. Firstly, from a radiation protection viewpoint. So if you happen to work with these radioisotopes, how to minimise the exposure that you receive. And also they're important for looking at the uses of radioisotopes and uh, sometimes you want to use a radioisotope that gives off gamma rays with high penetration, sometimes you don't. Right, the next thing to consider is half-lives. Now the half-life of a radioisotope is the time taken for the activity or its mass to drop by a half. So if you start off with one gram of a radioisotope. After one half-life, you have half a gram. After two half-lives, <coughs> quarter of a gram. Three half-lives, an eighth. Four half-lives, a sixteenth. Now, the actual half-life of any radio of a radioisotope uh, can be you know, vary from some isotopes. Radioisotopes have half-lives of microseconds. Some have half-lives of billions of years. The important thing is nothing changes the half-life of radioisotope. Increasing the temperature, does it increase the rate of radioactive decay? Does it matter if the radioisotope is in a solid, a liquid or a gas? Nothing changes the half-life of radioisotope. If the half-life of radioisotope is 10 days, we can't do anything to change that. It will always be 10 days. So there's quite a lot of numerical questions you can get asked about half-lives. Here's one example. So a radioisotope with a half-life of 2 minutes has a mass of 40 grams. What is its mass after 8 minutes? So we start at 40 grams. Okay. Now 8 minutes is going to be 4 half-lives. So 
one half life we go to 20 grams two half lives 10 grams three half lives five grams now note this is where people can make a mistake they go that's one two three four that's four half lives it's the arrows of the half lives one half life two half lives three half lives so we need to do the fourth one so four half lives it's 2.5 grams each half life being two minutes so two minutes two minutes two minutes two minutes adding up to eight minutes so uh, there's various ways you can ask questions about half lives so it's worth practicing some of them finally we want to have a look at the uses of radioisotopes so you should be able to remember some of these uses so for example cobalt 60 is a gamma emitter and it's used for treating internal cancers Amaracin 241 which is an alpha emitter is used in smoke alarms and carbon 14 is a beta emitter and is used for dating archaeological specimens in the exam question, if you're asked to assess the suitability of a radioisotope for a particular use, the two things to consider are the type of radiation being emitted, remembering its penetrating power, and the length of the half-life. Do we want the radioisotope to exist for a short time, have a short half-life, or do we want it to exist for a long time? So finally, four things you must be able to do. Describe the nature and properties of the three types of radiation. Construct balanced nuclear equations for alpha and beta decay. Carry out half-life calculations. And give examples of the uses of particular radioisotopes.